Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's take a look at the Earth's tilt. And the biggest effect of the tilt is the Earth's seasons. If it wasn't for the fact that the Earth was tilt, we would not have the seasons, the difference between summer and winter, spring and fall. Now notice here that the Earth is tilted. The tilt is relative to the ecliptic, the ecliptic plane. So if we draw a line straight up and down like this, that would be perpendicular to the ecliptic plane. Imagine the sun is over here. And as the Earth goes around the sun, it travels along what we would call the ecliptic plane, like that. And the tilt is relative to the ecliptic plane, and currently the, the tilt is about 23 and a half degrees. And that's then, of course, the axis of rotation. The Earth rotates around its axis every 23 hours and 56 minutes, like that. Now, notice that we have drawn the equator. We also have drawn what we call the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. These are circular rings around the Earth, which are parallel to the equator. One circle is 23 and a half degrees above the equator. The other one is 23 and a half degrees below the equator. And the reason why those are important is right now you can see, and of course I have this not quite matching. Let's, let me try to match it a little bit better. If we take a look at the sunlight coming from the sun, of course, even though we drew the sun like this, the sun is 93 million miles away. It's much bigger than the Earth. When the sunlight reaches the Earth, it's, all the sun rays are bas basically parallel to one another as they reach the Earth. And notice that on one day of the year, around June the 21st, when, oh, no, this would be, this is where the axis turned this way. This is the first day of winter. This is December 21st. Notice how the sunlight will hit the Earth's surface at 90 degree angles right where the Tropic of Capricorn is. And that would then be the beginning of winter. That, that would be when the Earth's tilt relative to the sunlight has its largest tilt away from the sunlight relative to the Northern Hemisphere. This would be the Northern Hemisphere's winter for the Northern Hemisphere, so NH for Northern Hemisphere, and it will be the summer for the, sun, for the Southern Hemisphere, SH for the Southern Hemisphere. Notice that the people that are right here at 23 and a half degrees below the equator will have the sunlight directly up above. So it'll come directly, if you stand there, the sun will be directly above your head at that particular day. But six months later, what happens is the Earth will keep the same tilt, but now it's on the other side of the sun, and of course, the sun rays will, of course, go in all directions, will be shining in this direction as well. Now notice that the sunlight will hit a point on the Earth 23 and a half degrees directly north of the equator, and that would then be called the Tropic of Cancer. That will happen on around June the 21st, the first day of summer, and that's when we have the longest days in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. So now we have summer in the Northern Hemisphere, summer for the Northern Hemisphere, and we have winter in the Southern Hemisphere like that. Now, why is it summer in the Northern Hemisphere here and winter in the Northern Hemisphere there? Well, for one thing, if let's say that you live up here somewhere at a location far away from the equator, and at this particular point in time, notice as the sunlight hits you, it hits the Earth at an angle. It hits the Earth when the surface is curved like that, so the sunlight all the energy that's contained, let's say, within a square foot or square meter as it hits the surface is now distributed over a much greater surface area. So the same amount of energy distributed over a much greater surface area deposits a lot less energy per square foot or per square meter. For the southern hemisphere over here, all the sunlight when it hits the Earth will be directly at a perpendicular angle to the surface of the Earth, and the same amount of energy coming in will now be distributed over much smaller space on the Earth and a lot smaller surface area of the Earth, so much more energy per unit area deposits the Earth over here versus over here. So a lot less energy per, per unit area, a lot less energy per square foot or per square meter, and so therefore it doesn't heat up as much and temperatures tend to cool down. When the, the sun hits the surface like that directly, a lot more energy per square meter hits the surface and things heat up quite a bit more. So things heat up and then summer ensues in the southern hemisphere, things cool down and things cool, uh, temperatures go down in the northern hemisphere. Another thing that we have to think about is notice that as the sunlight comes over here, it's the winter in the southern hemisphere, when we get to the Arctic Circle, 
right there, notice that any surface area beyond the Arctic Circle, between the Arctic Circle and the South Pole right here, will not receive any sunlight at all on that particular day. So this will be completely dark with no sunlight for the entire 24-hour period. No sunlight means no energy deposit means it gets very, very cold. Same, same thing happens in the Northern Hemisphere, if this is the Arctic Circle right there. Any area beyond the Arctic Circle, between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole right there, will not receive any sunlight. On, uh, on that particular day, starting from uh, December 21st, there will be no light whatsoever for that entire day anywhere in that region. Of course, as the winter then continues and the Earth continues to, to, to revolve around the sun, then what happens is more and more sunlight will reach higher and higher up and eventually all of the North Pole will receive light again and the next spring will come and the next summer will come. So the seasons are purely a result of the tilt of the Earth and the Earth's revolving around the sun. Uh, it's very interesting to also note that in our winter, it gets a lot colder in the North Hemisphere than in the winter of the Southern Hemisphere because there's a lot more land area in the North and a lot more ocean in the South. Ocean tend to temper the climate, tend to temper the temperature, so when, it's, and when the North Hemisphere has its winter, it's very bitter cold on the Earth. When the Southern Hemisphere has its winter, it's not nearly as cold except in the Antarctic, right there where there's another continent, right at the very South Pole, and it gets very, very cold right at that location in their winter time. So, that's why we have seasons. If it wasn't for the Earth still, seasons wouldn't exist. It would be a very different world, wouldn't it?